I'm going to shape the contour of this neck with a log splitter. guitars and welcome back to my shop I was just kidding about this thing I don't know if you could it would be an interesting video but I'm not gonna try it what I am gonna do is uh, I'm gonna shape the necks this neck right here the way I normally do it and that's with rasp and fouls and, and sandpaper so the beginning of this video I'm going to show you how I lay out uh, center lines and Areas where I take the material off first to get to a point where I can get the the, uh, the radius right, or not the radius, but the contour that I'm looking for on this neck. So let me show you how I get to that point. So here is a dissected view of this neck right here, same dimensions. The first thing I'm going to do on this neck, I'm going to thin it out a little bit. I'm going to take some material off the back of this neck. And I'm going to put basically an angle like this on it. It's going to taper from the heel. I'm going to draw the heel in. I'm going to draw in the volute area here. And I'm going to take off the material in between that. So the first thing I'll do is, and let me explain this diagram real quick. This square, the line coming up here, the dotted line coming down like this in the bottom. This is actually the radius, the 10 inch radius of this. But this all represents this neck right now on, on both of these illustrations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this material away. I got to take a pretty good chunk away from the first fret area and not so much from the 12th fret area. So all that's going to go away. I'm going to thin this down here. And it's going to get down to an inch at the 12th fret and about 7 eighths of an inch at the first fret. And that's not going to be my final dimensions. It's going to be close but not final. My final dimensions of the thickness of this, this neck is going to be 970 thousandths at the 12th fret and 875 thousandths at the first fret. Those are the dimensions. That's the thickness that the customer wants. The customer also wants a C shape. Now I come up with this thing years ago. I don't know. It's just a way of getting it in my head and how I was going to carve this down and without going into the too far and ruining the neck. So and I, I always done D shaped necks. This one, I do whatever shape the customer wants, really. But generally, my guitar is done with a, more of a D shape or a soft C. This is a C shape. So, with that dimension brought down here, the thickness brought down, then I'm going to draw a center line on this neck. And this is my center line right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure at the first fret, I'm going to measure from the center line out both ways. This just shows numbers for one side, but it's going to be done in both sides. So I'll go out 3 eighths of an inch on the, at the first fret and 7 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths of an inch at the 12th fret. So from a center line out, center line out, right, like that. I'll draw a line here and draw a line there. And then on the sides, for the first fret, I'll go 7 sixteenths. At the 12th, I'll go a half inch. I'll mark that here and here on both sides, and I'll draw those lines. And then, once I get that established, I'm going to take my file. I'm going to pretend this is a file right here. And I want to take off these corners. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking off the corners in between the heel and the volute area. So, basically, I'm shaving this down. I'm filing this down, this corner right here, till I get to them, the measurements I, that I made on both necks. I mean, both areas. Once I get there... There's still a little uh, a nub right here. It's going to be uh, here, a little corner here and a corner here. The whole length of the neck. Same thing here. So then I'm going to take my file and I'm going to file that down. File these down all the way around. And that's going to give me a general shape of that C that I'm looking for. Once I get to that point, I'll start using some sanding sticks and some sandpaper. And I'll carefully shape, keep the shape. All the way up and down that neck and I'll come up with these final thickness numbers 
hopefully that makes sense to you. It does to me. Uh, it's good to lay it out like this so you you know you don't, you're not going to go too far. And Because I've done it. I've gone too far, and I ruined the neck. I had to throw it away and start over. It happens. But uh, so this this is this is the plan right here for this neck. And by the way, this is a nice neck. This is this is some roasted curly maple and some roasted bird's eye maple for a fingerboard. It's got some white binding. The body on this guitar is going to be uh, roasted basswood. It's going to have a unroasted curly maple top to it that we're going to stain, put some kind of some kind of burst on. I think you want it green. And um, it's going to have that white binding as well. I thought with, with the white binding, it would contrast better. Because, I mean, it's got a nice chocolatey color to both pieces of wood. You really couldn't see the separation of the different styles of wood that was, or the different species, I should say. So, uh, we decided to do the white binding on the neck as well. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to shaving this thing down. You should be able to see these lines. Here's my center line right here. Here's my line on this side of the, the board. This is my line here for this side and the one down here, the ones we talked about earlier. So all of those are drawn on. Now it's time to file on an angle like this. We're going to put a nice flat spot all the way down. We're going to connect the lines across here. Okay. This edge all the way down this corner I should say and this one all the way down then I use this stick right here it has 120 grit here and 80 grit here and I ran this along this and this is a nice straight uh, piece of wood I sanded this level on my tabletop my table saw top and uh, I sanded right up to the lines where I measured everywhere Next thing to do is to take off this little edge right here and this little edge and then we'll start rounding it. The ends on that end and that end, we'll use another tool, another file for that and we'll blend everything in, the, the volute end and the heel end. neck is real close I still got a quite a bit of wiggle room 
little safe wiggle room for it. But before going further down, I'm going to go ahead and define the heel area. I'm going to use this little little rasp right here. Access the razor file. And this little thing is really sharp. Does a great job. So I'm going to kind of follow this line around. And I left a nice thick line. I'm going to sneak up in it, into it, and I'll do some more redefining later. This rasp right here has a nice fine cut to it. I do like this file. Now it's time to clean up this volute area. Now that I got that volute cleaned up nicely, I took a pencil and just put a bunch of marks on this. And I'm going back to the sandpaper stick and I'm going to level things out. So what this pencil mark is going to do is going to, as it disappears, whatever's left over is going to be my, my low marks. So I'll just keep at it until all the mark. I'll keep the pen. I'll keep running the pencil lead on it and running the stick over it until everything's gone. One thing I'm gonna want to do every once in a while is check. My thickness, actually I got this in the wrong place, I need to move this down. I have cutaways in this holder to line up the first and the 12 frets so that I can check on the gauge. So let me move that down a little bit. Make sure the first fret is in this area. Four Fred is in this area. All right, guys. Well, I had to stop for a little bit, come back to it another day. But what I was trying to do in that last scene was show you these little cutaways right here. And these cutaways are so that I can get the uh, caliper inside and get a measurement at the first fret. And that's looking good to just about what the customer wants it, a little bit more. And same thing at the 12th fret. 